Hey everybody, it's Nate from Explorers.life. I teach people how to build DIY campers, and this video is episode number eight in a series of videos where we are showing you step-by-step step from the ground up how we're upfitting our brand new Ford Transit into a DIY camper van. Now, in last week's video, we took a bit of a break from building to show you the tools that I'm going to be using for some of the upcoming electrical videos. And two weeks ago, we removed the headliner so that we could access the metal behind it to insulate and sound deaden. And in this video, we're going to spray lizard skin sound control sound deadening to make our transit a little bit quieter while driving down the road. Now, the first step in this process is honestly just a ton of prep work. We needed to access the metal under the floor liner and seat pedestals, so we started removing the seats. Now, this isn't really a full tutorial on how to remove seats, so I'm going to gloss over this pretty quickly, but let me know if you need a full tutorial on this and we will make that happen. We slid the seat forward, removed the rear battery tie-down screws, the battery cables, the seat to seat base bolts, the wiring harness under the seat, the seat belt restraining cover, the seat belt bolt, and pulled out the seat. Then we did the same thing on the passenger seat and got it out of the way. Next, we undid the connections to the inverter under the passenger seat and unbolted the inverter bracket and removed it from the van. Next, under the driver's seat, we removed the batteries and battery box and then unscrewed the CCP and wiring harness from the seat pedestal, removed the pedestal, folded the floor liner back as far as possible, and removed the cover from the center of the van. We wanted to remove the floor liner completely, but the floor liner really went quite a ways up underneath the dash and completely around the steering column. So for the sake of not making this project bigger than it already is, we decided to call it good enough. And especially after seeing that there was already some sound deadening and insulation up under the floor liner up front. Uh, so we would just spray as far forward as we could get up underneath the floor liner without getting into the dash. Next, we removed the door panels, which was just a matter of removing the screw covers, the reflector light, removing some screws, and then prying the door free of the trim clips, and then disconnecting the door lock and window connections, as well as the door handle release cable. Now, if you need a more detailed tutorial on this process, let me know and we will make a dedicated video for that one as well. Now the next step was to clean off all of the surfaces that we were going to be spraying. So we vacuumed up all of the surfaces, wiped everything down with degreaser, and then lightly scuffed up all the surfaces with a Scotch-Brite pad. Now it was a little painful putting all of those swirl marks in the new paint, but we wanted to make sure that this lizard skin would stick properly, so it had to be done. Next, we taped and masked off all of the areas that we did not want the lizard skin to get onto, which meant all the windows, the dash, the wires, the electrical components like the electric door slider motors and stuff like that, and also the threaded bolt holes around the van. Now, we sort of messed up on the threaded screw holes, uh, but I'll talk about that at the end of the video in the things we learned section. Now, Taping and masking took the better part of a full day between the three of us. We were pretty thorough on this though, as we definitely didn't want to be cleaning up overspray after the fact. Now this was definitely one of those projects where the prep work took over twice as long as the actual project. After the van was completely masked off, we gave it one final cleaning and wipe down. This time we wiped the surfaces off with alcohol to make sure that there was a nice clean surface for the lizard skin to bond with. Next was on to getting ready to apply the lizard skin. The instructions that came with the lizard skin are actually pretty good. So if you're trying to take on this project, go ahead and just spend the extra four minutes it takes to read the application instructions that comes with the application kit. Now I put on a Tyvek suit because lizard skin is considered um, non-hazardous, but I just really didn't want it all over myself and my clothes. And with hindsight being 2020, uh, that was a good idea. Next was getting the spray gun ready, which just meant setting the nozzle to the correct position as noted in the instructions, connecting the air hose, setting the air compressor to 70 PSI, opening the lizard skin bucket, 
mixing the lizard skin with the paddle included with the application kit, cleaning off the paddle in a bucket of warm water, and then pouring the lizard skin into the sprayer cup and connecting it to the spray gun. Next was finally game time. Now I started working my way around the van, spraying the lizard skin onto all the surfaces, paying special attention to all the surfaces that were large and exposed to the outside, as those were going to be the noisiest while driving. The body support ribs don't contribute as much noise while driving, but I just went ahead and decided to go ahead and give them a single coat of lizard skin just to be sure, and also keep any weird vibration noises to a minimum as well. Now the goal here was to spray two 20 mil coats of this stuff on all the body panels, let it dry, and then come back and then spray another 20 mil coat. But I did have some issues here. Number one, the lizard skin goes on in a rough, orange peel type of texture, which makes measuring the lizard skin accurately with the included gauge seemingly impossible. And number two, I am personally not accurate enough with a spray gun to uniformly spray exactly 20 mils of product onto a surface. So for thickness here, I, for the most part, just tried to use the gauge the best I could to get a good idea of what 20 mils looked like. And then from there, I just measured with my heart. Once I felt like I had 20 mils of coverage all over the large body panels, I cleaned up the spray gun and let the lizard skin dry overnight. The instructions said that the lizard skin would dry in one to two hours, but I really didn't want to walk around on a barely dry coat, so I just let it dry overnight. Now the next day, I followed the exact same steps as the previous day for the second coat and then cleaned up the spray gun by disassembling everything that could be disassembled, scrubbed all the lizard skin off of the sprayer, sprayed some warm water through the sprayer, and then set it out to air dry. Now the following day, after the second coat dried, here's how it turned out. Here's some things we learned during this process. Number one, a properly sized compressor is key. Some of the other lizard skin videos on YouTube are using an undersized compressor and they have issues with the gun not being able to spray enough volume for the lizard skin to not clog up the gun. Now, never had that issue, but lizard skin recommends an air compressor uh, capable of delivering four to five CFM at 55 to 70 PSI. The compressor that we upgraded to for this project delivers 5.3 CFM at 90 PSI, so we were good to go there. Number two, a respirator is a pretty key tool here. Now this stuff is classified as non-hazardous, but there's definitely a lot of particles and fumes in the air when spraying this stuff in an enclosed space like this. So I would even say that a simple dust mask is probably not going to cut it here. As far as fumes go though, once the coating actually dries, the smell goes away dramatically. So I estimate that after it cures even further, the smell will be completely gone. Number three, that little spray cup on the bottom of the spray gun, it just doesn't last very long. So I think next time I tackle this project, I think I would get a second spray cup and just have Steph keep refilling those cups to keep the process moving a little faster. Now, I was emptying a cup of sound control every probably three to four minutes. So a bulk of the time of this project was actually spent getting out of the van and getting refills. Now, number four, this lizard skin is actually pretty thick stuff, and when it cures, it's actually pretty hard. Not as hard and durable as like bed liner, but maybe pretty close, I guess. Now, on some of the threaded bolt holes we covered up with painter's tape earlier, the lizard skin completely covered up some of those little small tape squares, and we're probably going to have to dig some of those out, which may require tapping some threads. Now, hopefully not, but I'm gonna go ahead and mentally prepare myself to do so, and we'll see how that works as this build progresses. Now, overall, I'm pretty happy with this process. It, was indeed pretty messy, but no more messy than any other painting project, I don't think. Comparing the installation of this stuff to say something like Fat Matte or Dynamat or something like that, I'd say that it probably takes about the same amount of time 
considering the time spent on masking off the van as well. Now we definitely got better coverage with the lizard scan as there were a few spots where I was able to just simply stick the spray nozzle into a body support rib to get more product on some of the exterior panels. Now, as far as how it actually works, we took some baseline tests before we sprayed this stuff, so we're going to be doing some testing on this and have some nice before-after comparisons. But before we do that, we need to move on to spraying step two of this product, which is the ceramic insulation video. And that video is coming up next, so stay tuned. Now, we hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, it would be awesome if you would share it with somebody or a group who you think could use it. Leave any questions you've got or new things you learned in the comments section below. And if this video inspired you to build something, be sure to tag your projects with the Explorers Life tag on Instagram so that we can see and share your projects. Subscribe if you want to see more DIY camper building tutorials, and I will see you in the next video.